I couldn't look away even if I wanted to. It was like it had a hold on me. I was forced to gaze into the never-ending abyss of the demonic eyes. Then it smiled at me, manipulating my friend's face in a way that I've never seen before. The arrogance was undeniable. It seemed to mock me without saying a word. I was terrified. I wasn't prepared for this. As I started praying, the arrogant smile went away. Now ferocious hatred looked at me. I poured holy oil in my hand and put it on the top of her head, making the sign of a cross while I continued to pray. The demon screamed out in pain and tried to get away from me. I did everything that I could to hold her still. As I continued to stumble through the prayer, it was impossible for me to focus. My mind was so clouded, it's never been like this before. In all the cases throughout all these years, all the people that I've helped, I've never felt this way before. Looking back, I'm unsure if it was just the demon was so strong or I cared so much about my friend that I was an easy target as well. Honestly, it was both. Though I was not at my best, I continued the prayer, saying whatever God put on my heart. It took all I had to focus on that, but I did notice the demon reacting to certain things that I would say. It proved me. It had a weakness. It was in pain as I continued to pray and began addressing the demons. I don't know how, but I knew there were more than one. There were many. They grew more uncomfortable and tried to flee. It took all I had to keep her in the room. I would go back and forth from praying to pouring holy oil in my hand and putting it on the top of her head. Every time I did that, she let out a horrific reaction. I felt like a part of me died inside each time, but it was the only thing that I knew to do. I specifically remember I placed the oil on my right hand and placed it on the top of her head. And the demon just looked at me. It wasn't in pain this time. It was furious. The demon took her hands, placed it on my right hand, and with seemingly no effort, removed it off and put it by my side. I resisted with every ounce of strength that I had. It did it so easily. Any other time, Both of her hands, including all of her weight, couldn't move my arm down to my side, but this time it did. I was frozen in fear once more. I had the sudden thought that I'm in danger. The demon could strike me at any moment with this type of strength. That could be fatal. As the demon stared at me, I knew this was a level of strength that I've never come in contact with before. This time it didn't seem to run. It was like it was waiting on my move. I should have ran out of that building and never looked back, but I couldn't. This is my friend and I love her. I'm not going anywhere. So I did the only thing that I knew to do. I continued to pray. I started rebuking the demonic spirits one by one. As certain names came to mind, She reacted to each one violently, so I knew I was right on target. I cast out demon after demon after demon. When a demon was driven out of her, the arrogance of the demonic behind those eyes began to break, and I started to see glimpses of my friend. She was exhausted. She was in and out of consciousness. And now I would only get flashes of the demon looking back at me with such hatred that I can't describe in words. I was successful in driving the demons out one by one. But soon my friend interrupted me. And it was her. I had her look at me closely. And I could see those green eyes again. They were so heavy she was fighting to keep them open. But she told me that she was okay. She was just exhausted. I even had her pray with me because in my head I thought, there's no way a demon could do that. When she was telling me she was fine, she was so fatigued, I didn't think she'd be able to make it back to her room. But after I agreed to stop, and she prayed with me, she thanked me. And I remember now the sudden burst of energy that she instantly had when she thanked me and the way she looked at me. 
That wasn't her thanking me. And that demon wasn't gone. I watched as she walked out of 203 and back into her room in 206. I was conflicted because to my eyes it seemed like it was over and everything was fine. But in my heart I knew I made a mistake. And it would almost end her life. I didn't sleep good that night, even though I was completely exhausted. I waited for hours for her to wake up. I was downstairs in the lobby when her and her friend came down. She smiled at me with bright eyes and I gave her a hug. And we sat down at the first high top table in the dining room. The conversation was casual because I had no idea if her friend knew because she was asleep during the events in the next room. Her friend went into the music hall to grab us some drinks. Then I felt comfortable making a joke in that moment about last night. I brought up how crazy it was. She looked at me confused. I asked her what she remembered. She could remember no details of the exorcism, even the moments that I thought I was talking to her. The pit in my stomach grew. Then I asked, what about praying? You prayed with me, still. She didn't remember. Sadness and what felt like depression instantly took over her face because she could tell by my reaction this wasn't good. At this time, her friend came back in the dining room and gave us the drinks. She looked at both of us, laughed nervously and said, what's wrong with you two? We just played it off like it was nothing. Then they had to leave. I remember giving her a big hug and she was fighting back tears. Tightly, we squeezed each other and nothing else really mattered in that moment. And one of the most difficult parts of the whole event was watching her walk out that door because we both knew not only was it not over, but she was still possessed. And even more terrifying was if she didn't remember praying with me, that meant the demon prayed with me. To this day, saying those words aloud sends a chill down my spine. As I watched them drive away, I was left with the question, what if that was it? What if I never get another opportunity? What now?